So let's talk about the periodic table kind of in more depth. And let's start talking about the S block elements. So when I say S block elements, what exactly do I mean? So I'm referring to group 1A and group 2A. And so when I'm saying S block, I'm referring to the electron configurations that the elements in these two groups or families actually have. So let's kind of talk about what that means. So again, the electron configuration, so how you kind of map where the electrons are in the atom, it's more specifically where they, what their valence shell electrons are like, or their outermost shell electrons. Okay, so remember that the S valence shell can have two electrons maximally, and one of them is spin up and one of them is spin down, right? So they're spin paired. So uh, more specifically, group 1A elements are the alkali metals, and so these guys include lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. So they have one valence electron, so one electron in their outermost shell. So they also have low ionization energies, and that makes them very reactive. So when something has a low ionization energy, that just means that the ability of another, of a nonmetal basically, to come remove the electron from the outermost shell, is, it doesn't take very much energy. It's low ionization energy, so it can kind of just come pluck it out. So basically, when it loses that electron, that means that it's oxidized and it forms a plus one ion. So for instance, sodium will form sodium plus ion. Usually, that happens with a nonmetal. Remember, the nonmetals are off to the right-hand side of the periodic table. So for example, sodium and chloride. So sodium will form a plus ion, chlorine will form a minus ion. And so these guys, because they're so reactive and they're so willing to lose that one electron, they exist in nature only as compounds. So let's move to the neighboring group, which are the group 2A um, molecules. And so, pardon me, atoms. So these guys are the alkali earth metals, group 2A, and they have two valence electrons. So two electrons in their outermost shell. And these guys have a higher ionization energy than their neighbors in group 1A. So they're not quite as reactive, but they're still pretty reactive. These guys also get oxidized to form two plus ions. So for example, calcium will form a two plus ion. Again, because their ionization energies are fairly low, not as low as group one, but they are willing to lose those two electrons to become ions, they primarily form ionic compounds with nonmetals and other polyatomic um, ions. So for instance, calcium can form calcium carbonate, where calcium has a two plus charge and carbonate has a two minus charge to give an overall zero um, charge on that polyatomic ion. So these guys are called alkali earth metals because the earths of this group, so the calcium and the magnesium, they form, the calcium forms lime, which is calcium oxide, and the magnesium forms magnesium oxide and that, these guys make alkaline reactions. So therefore they have the name of alkali earth metals. So last but not least in these um, group one and group two, you'll see that hydrogen is up here at the top and it's color coded pink because it is in fact a non-metal, although it is grouped with the group 1A elements. Um, so it is grouped with them because it has a 1s1 electron configuration. So it does have the one electron in its valence shell However, again, it is a nonmetal, and it occurs as a colorless diatomic gas, H2, similar to chlorine gas and nitrogen gas. So it's grouped here because the ionization energy of hydrogen is higher than that of group 1A, so it has a lesser tendency to lose that one electron and become a proton than, say, um, sodium does to lose its electron and become sodium plus, but it does, in fact, lose an electron. So it forms molecular compounds. And it also reacts with metals to form what we call metal hydrides. And when a proton is in the form, when hydrogen is in the form of a hydride, that means it actually has a negative charge on it. So it can form a metal hydride, say, with sodium. So that would be sodium and hydride together. Sodium having a plus charge, hydride having a negative charge. So the fact that hydrogen can form a hydride with a negative charge is all the more evidence that it does not have the same properties as its other group 1A counterparts. And that is S-block elements.